This is going to be part four of the series of tutorials for helping you complete um, SimNet Excel 365 Capstone Project, also known as uh, Application Capstone Project 2, and I'm doing this on Windows. By the end of the last part, which was part three, we got as far as completing step number nine, all the way up to H, and now we're up to step number 10. Step number 10, select the lookup data tab name. So here is the lookup data tab name. It has very little in it. I can actually zoom in to see it. Then what they're asking us to do is um, to select the range A2 through A6 and give it a name. Call it cities with a capital C. How do we name a range? C2 through C6. Now, what I'm used to from Mac is the fact that I can right click and there is actually a rename uh, command here. But on Windows, we don't have that. But something we have on both Mac and Windows is under formulas, there's a uh, button called define name and I click on it, a dialog shows up. This is where the name is not just Atlanta, but C these the scope is workbook within the whole workbook uh, they're not asking us to do any commands and it refers to the sheet called lookup data a2 through a6 okay from now on this range has a name so if i click outside and i click here it'll say that it's b4 but if i click here it's a2 but if i select all of them it'll know it's cities so the whole range has a name Next, they want us to do the same thing for B2 through B6 and call it tax rates with capital T and capital R. I'm copying this name and I'm doing the same thing. This, these are the tax rates. So again, under formulas, define names. The name is not going to be tax underscore rate, but tax rate, one word. They call it camel case, capital T, capital R. I'm making sure that it's lookup data B2 through B6. Okay, now this range, if I go to here, tax rates, it has a name. Each cell still has a, an address B6 or you know whatever, but if I select the whole range, it shows me the name of the range. Why do we need that? So we can use it in the next formula. The next formula they want us to do is uh, they actually want to make room for it. So select the transaction data sheet and insert a column at column C. Uh, transaction data and column C. I'm actually clicking on the C, right-clicking, and insert. Notice how it moves C to D and inserts a, you know, a blank one where C uh, used to be. They obviously are going to make us give it a name, and then we're going to like you know do things with it. So insert a new column C, select C5, and type tax rate, capital T, capital R. I find it easier to just paste tax rate location sales ticket tax rate save next now we're actually ready to build the formula and the formula is called xlookup now in previous projects we have done vlookup what is xlookup it's actually very very similar only it's simpler it has fewer parameters it basically goes like, you know, look here and here and here and build a formula out of it. So build a X lookup formula to look up the value in cell A6 in cities and display the tax rate. So how do we do that? Uh, what we need is in C6, we're going to insert a formula. It's going to be under um, math and trig, and it's going to be called xlookup. If not under math and 
trig uh, lookup sorry not math and trig the lookup x lookup and it comes up with a bunch of uh, parameters now on the Mac it's going to appear here on the left as a pane but it's still going to have the same fields let's see what we're filling them up with um, c5 okay select c6 we did we're building a lookup formula in c6 what the lookup value will be a6 in the cities range and display the tax rates so a6 cities tax rates this is going to be a6 look at a6 what are you really looking for you're looking for the tax rate now where do we find that tax rate that tax rate will be found in the lookup data in the range i'm going to highlight the whole range called cities see how i just highlighted everything and it says cities then i'm going to go to return array and it's going to return me to the sheet where the formula is and where do they want the uh, what do they want that to be uh they want that to be they want uh return array to be tax rates and display that tax rate so this is going to be in data lookup the range that we called tax rate so a6 city tax rate let's compare that to what they have here a6 cities tax rate so let's explain not just how we do it but what are we doing here this really builds a formula if i'm you know if i click somewhere else it'll return me here it goes okay in atlanta what is the tax rate like you know that every city has like you know a city tax or a state tax and if they buy this in atlanta what would be the tax rate in atlanta and it's going to look it up by city so now i believe we can click okay yep and let's see it should say 0 0.09 now it's really going to become like 9% once we uh, format it, but we can already look at the solution. And see that this is going to become, you know, this is going to be 8 point, uh, you know, it's basically 9%. It's going to be um, rounded to that. Uh, so we're in the right direction. Um, it's rounding into nine because we don't have enough uh, digits here. The next thing they want us to do is to copy that formula. A6 city display. Copy the extra formula in column, uh, in column C and format the results as percentage with two decimals. Now we're gonna see the real results. So how do we copy this formula? We simply grab the bottom right corner and drag it all the way down and it calculates you know everything in atlanta is nine and everything is boston is six now it's not six cents it's percentage so i'm going to select this whole range go to home go to where we do the, the format and say no you're not currency you are percentage tax is in percentage but then i'm going to make sure that it has two decimals just like percent style with two decimals just like the example 8.90 percent 8.90 percent because i named uh, made it percentage now the default is two uh decimals if i needed more or less i would use these buttons to add more or less um save The next thing they want us to do is to use order of precedence in a formula. What's order of precedence? It's a formula where we tell it what to calculate first. Select the cell D6. Let's explain what this is all about. Listen, if you're in Atlanta and you bought something for 195 and the tax rate is 890, what would you pay 
overall you would pay 195 plus 8.9 of uh, of this so it's going to go like 195 plus about like you know what is it like uh, 10 dollars something like that how do we calculate it we go equals and let's follow the directions equals b6 equals then i click the cell b6 which is how much i would pay then times open parentheses one plus c6 type one type plus c6 why one plus because you're still paying the 195 plus the tax right and what they're saying here is they're deliberately saying um press enter and the missing parentheses is noted they want us to encounter like you know an error message because uh we should close the parentheses but what happens if we press enter without it we get a message Oh, sorry, what do you, you know what I forgot? The times. Let's do it again. Didn't close the parentheses. B6 times 1 plus C6. Enter. We find the typo. Do you want to accept the correction? Yes, I do. And then it'll calculate the right amount. Let's look at the solution and see if I got the right amount. Yep, 212.70. 212.70. It took this added itself to 8.9 percent like how much would it be if you added tax of 8.9 percent the next thing to do will be of course to copy that formula to the rest yes to accept the correction copy the formula to complete the data so i'm doing to grab the bottom right corner and go all the way down and just to check myself the last number should be 103.38 let's look at the solution yep 103.38 save again let's look at the formula for the first one equals b6 times parentheses that's like the order of precedence the precedence means that it'll do the adding before it does the multiplying uh, because if we didn't have the, the parentheses, it'll do the multiplying before the adding because that's the regular order of precedence. Um, then by copying it, because neither one of those cells was absolute, there's no dollar signs here, when we copied it to row 7, it simply updated B7, C7. And then it updated to B8, C8, and that's very convenient. Here it's 30, 30. B30, 1 times C30. Save. Preview the data in complete borders. Preview the worksheet for printing. Now, now to preview the worksheet for printing, uh, on Mac, I would go File, Print. On PC, I would go File, Print, and it would give me a preview. Now I can go back. I'm not doing anything with it, but you notice how there's like borders missing here and here. So I believe that would be one of the next steps. Uh, select A4 and apply a left border. Select D4 and a right border. So A4 here, left border to kind of close it here. And D4, right border, save. And now when I file and preview for printing, see how it closed it here. It looks like, you know, like a complete table. It doesn't have like holes in it. Back, save. We did this, we did this. Whenever they tell you to suppress control home or function control left, it's just a ma it, it, it's the same thing as click cell A1. Just to see like, you know, to kind of get out of it, to look at everything. Save. Then they want us to use a function called sum product. We are getting very close to the end because this is step 14. I believe 15 is the last step. 
no actually 16 so we got 14 15 16 because 17 is to save and close let's finish this step 14 uh, some product to calculate fees by location select the card fees tab uh, and name uh, and format the values in column c as percentage style with four decimal places so card fees column c card fees where are you card fees column c and here are the numbers and we're going to select them and we're going to format them as percentage but right now they have two decimals and i can increase the number of decimals i know it, it, it's confusing the arrow is pointing to the left but this is increase one click will give it three another click will give it four if i click too many times i click to decrease it four zeros or, or four uh, decimal points then there's some corrections because the numbers are not right what they're saying is that in cell c9 we should type zero uh, point zero zero nine five it's not nine percent it's point nine percent point zero zero nine five enter and you see how it becomes not nine percent but zero point nine percent same thing here i believe it's the next step is to fix that 7.5 to 0 0.75 by typing 0 0.0075 which formats it as percentage so 0 0.0075 enter and now i got the right number 0 0.75 not 7.5 save select the cell c15 and use the math and trig button to create a formula called sum product so c15 c15 right here under atlanta and then under formulas math and trig very scary sum product here it is and of course it opens that dialogue on mac it's going to open a pane on the left but it's going to have exactly the same um fields in it and then we're going to have to populate at least one or two of those arrays because this is to calculate like the sum of white cards of blue card of platinum card of gold cards in those cities and so on so what do they want us to calculate uh the formula multiplies the fee rate times the number of times of transactions of each card select the cell c7 c10 for array one now when they tell you to press f4 which is you know if you have a, a laptop it's function f4 because usually the function keys on laptops are being used for like your volume and stuff like that what it really means is that they want it to be absolute like dollar c dollar seven dollar c dollar ten whichever way accomplishes that is good so i'm going to go to the first array and select c7 through c10 then i can manually if i want to i can you know go function f4 actually didn't work um i, I can just manually go before the c and insert a dollar sign before the seven dollar sign before the c dollar sign before the ten dollar sign absolute it'll always take its um fees sorry the fee per transaction always from this column remember the dollar can be translated in your mind to the word always array two is not going to be absolute it's going to be relative array two is going to be d7 d10 d7 d10 why do we need this one not to be absolute because then it's going to update it to boston chicago and we want that one to go up to from d to e to f to g when we copy the formula then anything else that we need to do uh click done done uh, on mac it's called done here it's called okay in atlanta it calculated 411.25 and i want to make sure that that is correct so i'm going to go to the 
uh, solution, find that 411. Why is it not point something? Because they're going to make us round it up. Um, but now I can grab the bottom right corner and copy that formula all the way to St. Louis. Save. Then we're going to format with that format called accounting, number format with zero decimals, which means it'll round it up to whole dollars. Select this whole range, go home instead of general accounting, and I'm going to decrease decimal once, twice. It rounds it to 411, 372. Let's see if that's what it should be. Yep, 411, 372, and so on. Save. Step number 15. Use order of precedence and relative references in the formula. Select cell E22. E22 is where we're going to do a formula. Fees by card. Math and trig sum. formulas math and trig scroll down sum and it already thinks you know it knows what sum to do but it's not the one that we want they want the cells d7 h7 for the number one argument and click ok so again i forget it's uh d7 h7 d7 all the way to h7 that's the range number one d7 h7 it'll sum up all the fees for all the cities in the white card okay and it shows forty let let's see if this is what we got no it doesn't let's see why I'm going to undo, do it again. Let's read the instructions. Uh, sum D7, select E22. Oh, then it, it was, actually it was right because we're gonna do some things to it. So I was on the right track. I'll do it again. Uh, Meth and trig, sum. range d7 all the way to h7 d7 h7 i could have typed it in here if i wanted to as long as it ends up as d7 h7 then i'm going to click ok and then i'm going to edit the formula now on mac if you still have that pain with like you know um, a formula builder close it because otherwise it will not let you type manually what do they want us to edit here edit the formula to multiply the results by c7 for the white card fee see figure eight where is figure eight this is figure nine here's figure eight see how it's sum of d7 it's really small but you know believe me let's see if we can you know make it bigger a little yep it's supposed to be what we got now, which is equal sum D7, A7, but we're going to make it multiply by C7. Why multiply by C7? Multiply by, and I'm going to click C7 because that's the rate. It's going to add all of these up, multiply by 2%. Sum D7, A7, multiply by C7. I could have written it manually, but as long as it ends up the right thing enter then it should show 800 which is really what it shows up here 800 we're going to give it a little format and everything but 
it's already on its you know on the right track um we just did d copy the formula to e23 e25 e23 e25 which means basically drag it down all the way to gold card and it calculates basically it sums up okay gold card in atlanta and boston and chicago and san diego add all of these numbers up multiply them by the percentage this is how many fee how much fees the you know the company is going to um have to pay because a sporting goods company has to pay you know platinum cards like you know visa they have to pay them fees this is one of the reasons some stores don't like to take credit cards because they have to pay the credit card uh, companies a fee but that's beside the point um we are getting really close to the end um they want us to uh format those cells as accounting number format with zero decimal places so select them home instead of custom we're going to go to accounting but they want zero places so i'm going to click here on decrease once decrease twice and we got our 800 and 698 and so on let's compare 800 698 you know and so on beautiful click outside save last step control home just means you know get out of whatever you're clicking and go to a1 here's a1 um they're getting ready to print it finalize the workbook by setting a page options and the document properties open the properties dialog box it's in the file menu now in am i on mac or on windows it sounds like i'm on mac it feels no i'm actually on windows so back to step 16. properties dialog box file menu actually on mac it's exactly the same place file menu and options and it should be under file tab um is it info it's it sounds like the language is mac language properties dialog box summary tab that sounds very mac let me um switch from mac to windows because it sounds like it's stuck on mac that's not windows language see it's it's like stuck okay mac back to windows let me refresh let's see on windows i know it's in a different place because there's no uh, file menu there's something else actually it's the same open the properties dialog box file menu file and i don't see properties i see options oh info instead of properties they call it info here it is and this is where i can give the uh, uh, the document uh its properties which is right here advanced properties then um all of this actually is their mistake because it sounds like this is the way you would do it on Mac. From this point on, it's exactly the same. Transactions data is, is the title. I'm going to copy this, go here, and title is. I'm going to let me paste or not. Copy. 
Okay, no big deal. I can actually show all properties and go to title and I think here it will let me paste. Same thing. Uh, what else do they want us to change? Uh, the comments uh, box and they want us to enter first week of September. Where is the comments box? Right here at comments. First week of September. So we did this, we did this, we did this. We did the comments. Um, select the pivot table sheet tab and change the page orientation to landscape and scale it to fit one page. So it's actually two things. So we go to the pivot table. Let me go back. We go to the one called pivot table. This one, I might have to click a little to the left. And under page layout, first of all, I change the orientation to landscape, but also I can make it fit instead of automatic. I can make it fit into one page width and one page height. Then they want us to do, let's save. Then they want us to do the same thing to another um, sheet. The transaction sheet, they don't want us to change the orientation, but just to make it fit into one page. So it's the sheet called uh, transactions, not transactions data, but transactions. Same thing, page layout, width, one page, height, one page. Save, and I believe we're done. Save, close, upload, submit for grading. Uh, I hope you followed all those steps. I know that I rehearsed all those steps in advance and submitted as you know to rehearse and got 100. So there's no reason that if you copy that if you follow these steps you shouldn't get a hundred i'll say again that mac users should follow the mac instructions except in one place that i pointed out where the windows instructions serve both mac and windows users better